and good day good day everyone it's really great to be here with uh, all of you today. and uh, welcome to the last episode of talk to your meeting daughters with me today i have martin duffy good afternoon all good to be here again nice to see you paul it's great to have you here again martin and it's uh, wonderful to see how consistent we were during this year with these episodes. It's uh, really uh, great to have you entertaining, hosting, co-hosting with me these amazing conversations. I'm thankful to you, Martin. Yeah, we were, it was uh, just reflecting on them was was really interesting. Uh, we, we got an awful, we got through an awful lot more than I expected at the beginning of the year, to be perfectly honest. I, I thought, you know, if we do four or five of these, well, we actually did 10. Which, which was, um, and and we had some really, really interesting conversations with people, really interesting stuff. Absolutely. I think that uh, also impressed with the collection of uh, facilitators and consultants that we have also yeah. during these uh, years and the, the nuggets that were shared were tremendous. Yeah. Uh, we have here, um, we have created a community website with, uh, with our space, uh, uh, whose founder, uh, Ilke uh, Makilo, is uh, one of the book co-authors also. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have, uh, on, on the, let me share you the screen for you, a collection of uh, participants, uh, guest speakers that were here with us. And it was really great. Uh, this is a couple of nuggets that we have here on the website. But uh, let's recap from the beginning. We have... Uh, with first edition, this was quite historical. Then we have uh, we had Elise Keats and Pilar OT. You remember this one on how productive is your online collaboration? Yeah. And and just as we are speaking uh, right now, we are facing these challenges of uh, changing uh, our recent events into uh, into uh, Zoom or online events. You know, myself in particular, I would like to. Um, to uh, mention that the event that I'm going to host tomorrow with Glint uh, in in uh, in Porto was not at all cancelled. So for my dear viewers that are watching us, uh, watching me today, uh, just uh, to let you know that um, we are uh, the event that's going to take place tomorrow in Porto is not cancelled. It's on, and uh, you can join us by registering here there, and uh, obviously. Also, if you have, uh, by any chance, you are in uh, Porto, you can still attend uh, the, this session uh, actually physically in, in Porto. But uh, this is uh, uh, also part of our challenges uh, right now uh, to try to uh, struggle uh, with, uh, with the impositions from the COVID restrictions. Yeah. And suddenly, Martin, this is the surprise when we decided to do this event uh, that was supposed to be face to face when they decided to do it uh, Zoom. Suddenly, we had a great more number of participants registering. Yes, yeah. Well, uh, that's I suppose that's not surprising, Paul, is it? That that you know, in in the course of the various conversations that we had with our guests during the year, one of the one of the consistent themes that came back was the diversity of inputs that you could get. And even if you look at, just look at the episodes that we ran ourselves, look at the diversity of the geography, the disciplines, the experience, the backgrounds of the people that, that we had our conversations with. Um, and all of that became possible because we were using a platform that we couldn't have actually done what, what we did without this type of virtual platform. Um, and a year and a half ago, it's not something that we would have considered doing. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, out of out of adversity, I guess, comes certain opportunities. Um, and then those opportunities, we can never say what way they're going to go. But but I can certainly say that the conversations that we have that that have been they've been very very nicely curated on our house space uh, working area uh, that people can access. You, you know, we we can we can show people them. There they can access the recordings that, that we've made. Um, and there's some really, really valuable insights and, uh, and, and feedback from the participants in all of those different conversations that we had. Absolutely. And, and guess what, uh, Martin? We have a surprise guest here with us, uh, Steve Peter, one of our oh. 
interview is, is um, should I, we bring him in the studio? Please, absolutely. Yeah, that's what a yeah, fireside chat is, is about. Because I was watching my LinkedIn uh, message uh, tool uh, this morning and Steve say, hey, I have your uh, uh, stream invitation. Hi, Steve. Hey. Good morning. Welcome to our live show. Hey, Steve. Oh, uh, it's, oh as I'm in trouble with the sound. Okay, I'll bring you up in a few minutes. Don't worry. No worries. Uh, um, but what, one of the things actually that I, I was reflecting on, Paul, and, and it was a, as we invited guests to come to, to each of our conversations, uh, the consistent question that virtually everybody asked us was, what are the questions that you're going to ask us? Hmm. So the only thing that we ever gave anybody was just, the theme just the topic that we wanted to talk about and and when we said to people well well we weren't planning to give any questions because we don't know what the questions are and, until we start a conversation um and and for me that might just have been one of the biggest strengths of those conversations be because they then turned out to be just genuine conversations we we weren't trying to solve any particular world problem but but I think in every instance, some really interesting insights came out of the collaboration between the participants on the given day and, and what people, what each different person brought to the conversation where over the 45 or 50 minutes, the conversation evolved in its own direction. And, and then I, I guess our job as hosts was, was to try to summarize it and, and to try and extract the best lessons that we could so again at the end of each of the episodes there's a there's a, a short kind of two minutes minute and a half two minute summary uh, that that i've tried to overlay that wasn't done after the event that was done as we were all sat there and um, and then we have a, a kind of a wrap up with each of our guests where they just give a a, a one minute one minute 30 overview of their own to, to give their their overall collective sense so I think for for our um for our audience now to, to be able to have that archive to go back and look at the, the range of topics that we covered the diversity of opinions that that we got on board and then the wealth of knowledge and experience that people very kindly shared with us um I think it's a fantastic resource to to have accessible and available uh, there online. I'm kind of very proud of, of the the fact that we've we've managed to pull this together a little bit unexpectedly, to be honest. Absolutely, absolutely, Martin. And for the the, the dear viewers that would like to experience the um, virtual space where you have all the collection of our episodes, please just uh, uh, share your names here in the chat on the social channels that you are probably watching us today. And we'll uh, be happy to invite you. It's not it's not uh, uh, open to the public uh, space, unfortunately. It's uh, by invitation only. But uh, for LinkedIn members that are following us and are following these episodes, we'll be very very pleased to have invite you and having you experience the our space uh, virtual space where we have all this uh, collection of wisdom uh, uh, hmm. shared there that was shared during two thousand twenty one. Yeah. Definitely. And even the house, the house space platform itself, Paul, you know, it, it's a it's a fantastic tool for for doing the type of work that we've done with ju with just this this body of work. Um, but it's such such a versatile and flexible uh, piece of kit to to do a much much broader range of activities within organisations for for hosting events, for hosting meetings, and interestingly for for organising and managing ongoing events so you know we we very often think of of the workshop or the event as a single day or two days but but i think one of the beautiful things about house space is it it can allow something to continue on for a considerable period of time that that allows much wider engagement much wider interaction uh, and then it serves as an archive as in the case of, of our own work here it serves as a wonderful archive of the materials that that a group of people can bring together. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, and and you can use it also for your internal workshops in a, in the company. I'm thinking about the interactions with um, other digital tools for collaboration that organizations normally have, 
I was just um, ex uh, exiting from another meeting uh, just a few minutes ago with the Meeting Wizard. It's uh, an incredible platform that uh, we are not just discovering. Uh, it's Martin, a uh, uh, Dutch uh, manufactured in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, yeah. by, by someone with uh, already experienced uh, 20 years of experience with uh, using um, uh, group decision support systems in organizations, right? Very and good. we are discussing yeah. precisely the fact that there's already so, so many different choices like Monday, yeah. Trello, uh, you Slack, and all these good. platforms for people to collaborate. And in the end, uh, how are we going to navigate on these digital collaboration jungles? It's a, it's a little bit of that. That is a challenge because I, I guess, you know, my experience of, of that challenge and, and I've come across this with clients where I'm working with a client over the next two days to, to do a, a remote workshop. We had originally planned it to be face to face. Uh, COVID intervened, got in the way and we, we had to switch to in this instance, we're going to switch on to Zoom. Um, and, and then we're going to use some mind mapping software to, to capture stuff. We're going to use traditional Excel spreadsheets uh, for other aspects. But, but it all reflects what the organization is actually comfortable with and the technologies that they're comfortable with. And I guess one of the challenges I think that we're going to face is that as different organizations use different platforms, then for us as facilitators, becoming adept or proficient with interacting with all of the different platforms, that becomes its own challenge. Um, so it's it's not it's not easy, but it, but it is really interesting. That's for sure. Um, to see one what's out there, two the type capabilities that they all bring, and then three the pace at which they are evolving and and new features are emerging. Um, and it looks like very soon we could all be having virtual meetings where you could literally be an avatar in a room, uh, sat in your own front room, but, but be an avatar a bit like a holodeck on the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> you know, um, going back to my own childhood, uh, 35 <laughs> or 40 or 50 years ago, you're kind of saying, crikey, um, what was science fiction has is now nigh on becoming fact on a literally day-to-day -day basis so. absolutely absolutely and and i i recently wrote an article about uh, the video collaboration landscape and i'm seeing these immersive uh, 3d platforms uh, yeah. emerging uh, so it, it, it's going to be exciting to see how the impact of 5g for instance is going to bring to mm -hmm. meetings because now you can put these google glasses or yeah. these 3d glasses and and you can suddenly be all together uh, like in in uh, in uh, inspecting a plane even though you've not not close to that plane anymore right yeah. so it's, it's uh, you want to bring the engineer oh please uh, have a look at here and uh, we will be all actually looking at the plane uh, thinking about plane maintenance for instance and without actually yeah. being close to that plane uh, yeah it's going to be amazing but, uh, but on, on that on that exact point paul there was a in in episode nine that we did um how do we blend our virtual and physical workspaces and and we had john hovel simon wilson and uh tamara mm -hmm. everley uh, we we spoke and so, some interesting points came out of that conversation ab about this exact area um and, and i suppose one of the overriding um, concerns that that we discussed was the, the 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 risk or the possibility that we could lose the human touch that that all of the the, the technology and all of the capability it's fantastic um, but but that at the end of it all we have to accommodate the the core basic human need. And I, and I remember John, if I recall correctly, made one really, really telling point in our discussion. And he used the word liminal space. And the point that he made at the time was this concept that when we're, when we're all in the physical space, we all know what we're doing, what we're experiencing, what we're interacting with when we're not in the physical room. So in a, in a normal workplace with normal meeting spaces, when we go out to the kitchenette to grab a coffee or we go down to the reception to collect a letter or whatever, 
we all know the physical environment and the experiences that everybody's having. But John made the really telling point that when we're all in our virtual space, we don't know anything about the background environment that everybody is now working in and living in and, and the pressures and the difficulties and the challenges that they're facing while they're interacting in our virtual environment. And I thought that was a really, really telling point that as, as we progress further and further into virtual interactions, I think we'll have to become much more conscious of that. That, you know, as soon as somebody blanks the screen or switches off their camera, they might be going to attend to a sick child. They might be just answering a ring at the doorbell, as I did, Paul, just before we went live. You know, my dogs start going crazy when the doorbell goes. You don't face that kind of stuff at work or in the physical working space. So when you're in the virtual working space, these are just life things that happen. And, and I think making allowances for those on all sides will become its own challenge. Um, so, you know, that, that was a really telling point, I think, that came out from our discussion in episode nine with, with uh, John, Simon and, and Tamara. Definitely. And I think Steve is back. Shall we bring him in oh, again? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If Let's we have our, our audio sorted out, brilliant. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Steve. Uh, my, uh, audio is all my fault. So configuration on my machine and so on, just with swapping platforms and so on. But uh, I, Martin, great to see you again. I heard. Great to um, see you again, Steve. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Um, uh, very interesting. I, I, I was reflecting uh, just the other day, actually, during that kind of uh, annual. Uh, process of writing Christmas cards and sort of, you know, just reaching out to customers and so on. During the last two years, one of the things that's happened virtually, entirely because of the situation you're describing about being out interrupted by kids and doorbells and so on in this virtual space we're in, um, how that has also uh, helped break the ice uh, in terms of the relationship with my clients. And I have some really close relationships now with a, a, a few clients who I've never met in person, uh, who I feel really close with. Uh, one client organization, we've done 22 webinars, I think, over the last 18 months. Um, and we're, we're so tuned into the whole planning cycle, the uh, preparation, the marketing, the uh, organization and the facilitation online that it really feels like a very close colleague that I'm working with and a bunch of people who are regular in touch because of the regularity of the webinars. And I absolutely take your point about the need to be cautious around how we uh, create the environment where our participants can have the casual conversations, the uh, you know the meeting and the coffee machine uh, conversations and the uh, the, the the random conversations almost that happen that just trigger a new train of thought or an innovative uh, overlap with different parts of the organization. We really need to work hard on how to do that. Um, and we've been experimenting for the last uh, 18 months, two years in building in opportunity for people to do that. Some have been really quite successful. Others have fallen flat. So, uh, you know, we're still in that learning curve about how to build that back in. We're glad Absolutely. to be here. Uh, Martin, I think you are muted. Martin? What? We lose your sound now? Uh, okay, back. You're back. Oh, dear. It's my fault. I've scuppered him. No. Hey, can you hear me now, guys? Uh, we can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, my yeah my my microphone here seems to have gone dead, so I've just switched to an alternative microphone. Um, I was just going to say there, Steve. I I would guess that what works in one organization may not necessarily work in a different organization. Is is that part of the findings that you've actually come out with? Yeah, I I think so. Of course, there's multi factors around why things work and not. It's about the mm -hmm. uh, the, you know the 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 topic as well the yeah. you know the type of organization the association how they've worked previously how they've uh 
individually and collectively adapted to the virtual world, you know, whether they spend any time together, whether they socialize, I think, whether their culture has built back in some way of just, you know, having conversations that are not formal or, you know, on, on a time. So, you know, a couple of techniques that have worked well with organizations is that uh, you open the channel 15 minutes, 20 minutes before yeah. the start of the meeting. Yeah. Um, you invite people. I mean, I, I use an excuse. I call it a connection clinic. I invite people mm -hmm. to join early just to fix any tech issues, which yeah. I didn't have the opportunity to do today, but would have done just to, to, to be absolutely sure that, uh, you know, you're online and you've got the right settings and everything's working. That 20 minutes also then gives you the opportunity just to, you know, say hello and uh, yeah. connect with other people. Um, yeah. Another technique is to uh, build in to some of the longer uh, events uh, a break, an extended break. Call it a 20 minute break, or if you're uh, extending a, a session over lunch, have a you know 30 minute, 40 minute break. And I just throw up uh, some breakout rooms, you know, yeah. called uh, you know lunch room, uh, coffee break, uh, uh, hobbies, you know, pets or whatever. The chat. And I, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And just have people drop into those, uh, you know, non-mandatory. Um, but um, you know, what I find is that um, some groups are so into what they're talking about, pets, for example, and they're all sharing their pets. They've got lap dogs and cats and all sorts of things. You can't get them back into the main meeting. <laughs> um, but a really lively conversation. Uh, other rooms don't work because, you know, people join and then, you know, nobody else is there or whatever. And I think it also gives you so just another reflection is about when people go to a face-to-face -face meeting um there are those people who are absolutely going there to uh well of course they're interested in the topic of the conversation and the uh, the conference but they're also going there to network and they know that martin duffy is going to be there so i'm going to say hello to martin and i'm going to you know talk about a project with him uh and i've got that in my mind when i go there so i'm on the lookout for martin and a quiet opportunity to have a one-to-one -one chat with him um other people go to conferences and they're interested in the topics. They sit through the workshops. They see the presentations. They kind of join the breakouts or they don't really interact. Um, and they sit quietly on their own and they catch up on their email on their phone whilst the, uh, the breaks and the networking opportunities are given in that physical space. So we're accommodating all sorts of uh, needs and requirements and uh, you know, activities for people um that emulate what we do in the face-to-face -face world uh but we're also accommodating different types of people who will respond in different ways to the opportunity that they're being given to network actively for example yeah absolutely let, let me just show you out of curiosity here an example from the the last event that i uh, facilitated with an incredible team in uh, manitoba collective right. impact network and we have created on our space precisely what you are talking about, Steve, here. Yeah. We are creating these lunchtime chats where participants could join. And this is a feature from our space. That's uh, these uh, widgets with uh, that are video uh, conferencing rooms. So you could, uh, if you lunchtime chats for new projects, you can join here. If you want to talk about hobbies, you can join here. If you want to talk about travel, you can join here. Right. And this kind of... Uh, uh, tech support for 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 what you've just saying is yeah. uh, more and more available these days with with uh, platforms like Outspace and 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 others. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that um, that that opportunity uh, is similar. You know, if you if you uh, run workshop streams in face to face uh, uh, events, you have people who um you know find that experience uh, you know lacking in something because uh you know perhaps the conversation wasn't facilitated uh you know it wasn't triggered it, the, you know the ice wasn't broken quick enough for people to actually get into the uh, topic uh so a lot of the issues that we're having virtually i think are reflecting issues that we have in a face-to-face environment so we're not you know we're, we're not going from perfection to the imperfect virtual world we're going from an imperfect face-to-face -face world and you know some of us like the three of us have been working but i mean i've been 35 years and trying to you know be more effective and more efficient in in face-to-face -face events using technology using t facilitation techniques and so on 
so we're we're emulating an imperfect world in the virtual world and you know the the delight for me in the last two years has been the opportunity to learn uh, and experiment and be trusted by clients to try new things yeah. uh, and i you know i i, I salute uh, those clients who are willing to do that um and i'm looking forward to what comes out you know as it appears that we're still going to be in this world for the next three yeah. to six months at least if at not least, yeah. permanently yes, that's, how, how are you going to manage martin this week you're going to do zoom as well yeah we're, we're going to use zoom because that's the that's the platform that the so client cool. company is familiar with um so i'm i'm quite happy to to work with whatever whatever platform they have but I, I, Steve, I think you make a, a really valuable and a really interesting point, and that is that, and Paul and myself, we were touching on this a little bit earlier, where there's such a conglomerate of different platforms out there at this stage that for facilitators to try and stay on top of all of the technical details of all of the different op options becomes technically just improbable, if, if not impossible. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think it does then beg a, a level of forbearance a level of indulgence a little bit and and a level of patience both from our clients and equally from ourselves to to be willing to actually try stuff and discover it well it didn't work <laughs> and, and yeah. it's not because we didn't know or because we weren't trying it's because well sometimes it just doesn't work um, yeah so i for, for me that is an interesting and an exciting development you know yeah just 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 two two points on that i think um a client made an interesting point to me early in the uh kind of lockdown phase where they said i don't know we don't like to experiment we want to innovate but we're not prepared to experiment because that, <laughs> it's psychologically you know more like <coughs> um and and the second thing one of the things i did early on in the uh, lockdown was to produce a um a map, a chart of the technology that was out there at the time, and it's been added to since. It's on my LinkedIn feed. Yeah. Um, and what I wanted to say is is directly uh, meet that, Martin, that, um, you know, we are the experts. Trust us to understand the nature of the market and the technologies out there. We have dedicated our professional lives to learning about these things uh, and, uh, you know, getting to grips with them, and therefore will advise clients what the best and most appropriate technologies are please don't you know same with accountants you know you don't go out as a non-accountant and start experimenting with different accounting packages you go to an expert and you ask and seek their advice about what's best to fit the requirements of a particular event and i you know i would encourage people out there in uh, you know who are organizing events who aren't professional event designers uh, please use an expert to recommend you know the approach the, any technologies you need and so on but that's what we're here for and that's what we've dedicated our time and energy to uh, absolutely absolutely steve and with that uh let me see if i can share here the um, the the are okay. you still seeing my screen yeah yeah, yeah. yes so this is a, a an interesting market overview that uh, steve uh, has produced with the feedback with the many colleagues including my myself i remember i i think i pointed out to lacking of some uh, items here and and oh, little by minute. little uh, steve completed this amazing piece of information uh, with a number of uh, tools out there so zoom is one tool but there are many many others and um, yeah. and uh, if you're a facilitator and you like to find your way in this uh, what i call the digital tools co collaboration tools jungle Please reach, reach out to us and we will be very, very pleased to help you in any way we can. Well, folks, I think that's all for now. Uh, we have uh, two minutes to go. This was a very short transmission for the 2021 20, uh, in review. So major uh, thoughts for 2022, uh, Steve and Martin. What do you forecast for, for next year? I, Martin's frozen on my screen. Yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, I think, uh, you, you know, I, I'm really hopeful that uh, that we managed to tackle COVID and that, uh, you know, we, um, I, I know there's been, uh, uh, it's touched a lot of families, there's been many tragedies around it, but um, I think for us in our niche in the event uh, design and uh, delivery market, it's given us a tremendous opportunity because working virtually has become a must have rather than a nice to have. And I think those 
are the times when innovation and step change really happen. Um, so I guess I'm looking forward to more of uh, the same, you know, the curve, the ability to experiment, the ability to learn more uh, and the opportunity to work with wider uh, clients and really begin to think about the impact on climate change uh, from not having people flying around the world all over the place for meetings and conferences and so on and how we play a part in that uh, to build this new future and i think it starts here fantastic how about you martin yeah i think we've uh, i lost a little bit of our stream there my my uh, technical glitch i'm not sure what was going on but i i, I think uh, 2022 uh, and into the future is going to be more and more interesting I don't think we've seen the end of COVID. Um, I hope it will become ish like the flu, that we will see variants of it, but that they may become less virulent and maybe more transmissible, but hopefully less impactful on the, the health and well being of, of our loved ones and, and colleagues and stuff. Mm. Um, but, but whatever, I think one of the the key points that came out of some of the conversations, quite a few of the conversations we had during 2021, Paul, was that COVID caused a switch. It caused a change. And Steve, I think the conversation that you joined us in, uh, this was part of, of our key theme. And that there, I don't think there's going to be a switch back. But, but none of us can be certain what that future switch is actually going to ground out or bottom out at. So in, in that context, I, I think we have, there's some interesting days ahead. I think there's some exciting days ahead. And I've no doubt there's going to be challenging days ahead. Um, but, but on balance, I, I think, um, you know, if, if we look at it positively, I, I think we can take an awful lot of, of benefits out of it if we can improve the world that we all live in for, for everybody's uh, benefit into the future. So I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. Um, and the fact that I had my third grandchild just, uh, just three weeks ago, that's a, that's a massive, that's a massive big uh, present to bring us into 2022 with a big smile on our faces as well. So <laughs> yeah, congratulations, absolutely. Martin. Yeah, thanks. absolutely. Absolutely. And, and dear friends, sometimes I wonder if we didn't get, uh, uh, this bad habit of thinking that the world is predictable because in fact, for our ancestors, there was elements of predictability in the world, but it's also always very, very unpredictable. And learning to live with something that is not predictable, I think it it uh, really uh, it causes a little bit of a stress on our minds, right? Uh, learning to live with not knowing what's going to happen next month, and and we are not sure what's going to happen next month, you know, yes. <laughs> really. Okay, Martin and Steve, it was really great to have you here and um, I wish you a, a very, very happy season as uh, yeah. we're starting to enter this season and uh, hopefully we'll stay in touch. Uh, at least uh, in my mind, I will have you all present during my Christmas days and uh, hopefully we'll meet again soon early in January. And Steve, lovely to see you again. Wasn't yeah. expecting to, uh, to see you drop in, but it's, it's, uh, it's lovely to have you in and, and uh, catch up on the chat. Great stuff. Yeah, great to see you guys. Have a really nice festive season and a bit of a relax and a re recharge. Super. We all need it. Okay. We all need all right. it. We all need it. I'll mark your words. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye everybody. Bye.